Good morning. Today we're going to work on brush knee twist step. Uh, it's the fifth move in the Tai Chi set. And um, I'm going to talk about the application and the function and how it pertains to uh, the Da Lu, the fixed form. It's important to remember that in the fixed form, it's only the basis of the movement and everything goes from there. It's not necessarily the, the uh, technique of how to do the move as in like a, so like a self-defense technique, but it's only like to teach you the fundamental principles of the movement. And then from there, you can kind of explore in depth um, how to go from there. First knee twist step is um, Lu in, uh, which is Lu is deflecting the opponent and receiving. And it uh, works into um, the single hand pushing, as we'll demonstrate later on. But first, I'm going to go into just basically how to do the movement correctly. Brush knee twist steps uh, starts after stork cools wings. So we'll start from there and demonstrate the uh, actual movement. <clears throat> stork cools wings from this position here. So the first uh, movement will be to step back and come across. In this position here, the hands are shoulder level and the right hand is the right arm is like chicken wing <laughs> chicken wing um so that it is the elbow is lower than the hand as we get into the application i'll explain why that is the second part of the move so in the finishing part of first knee twist step you should be balanced forward and back not sitting back again i'll explain that later on balance here and then from here you're going to transition into the middle part and come in hands facing forward and then change to the other side again the side chicken wing on the left palm straight fingertips straight forward and sitting down balance and then again transition to the center and then step back even and then back to the right side so if um, you need to uh, in practice go ahead and in the middle part of the step so that you're kind of you can put your foot down on the ground in the beginning and then go to this side Come to center, step. This is just beginning, when you're beginning to learn, to help your balance. Later on, once you get that, you can go smoothly into that middle step. The important part is in the finish of the move, to be balanced between the legs, not sitting back. Also, when you tell people to move in a straight line going back, they tend to think of it as like uh, walking on a, a tightrope. And a lot of people make the mistake of having their feet you know, too much in a straight line. And so you're kind of tippy in your balance. The strongest balance is shoulder width apart so that you have stability left and right as well as forward and back. So in the, um, in the brush knee twist step, I'm going to step into the shoulder width stance, not straight line stance. Second, you want your toes to be straight forward so they have strong action forward and back because as we get into the application, you'll see how important that is. So 
the application dictates the reason for why you perform it like this in the Dalu. That's the important part to remember. It's early in the morning, I just woke up. So uh, be shorter width apart in the stance, in this position here. The hands are in line with the shoulder. And you don't have to be straight uh, forward and you don't have to be overly twisted. This is a comfortable stance. This is the, the receiving position. Just remember that, receiving position for the opponent's push. So you want to have a very strong stance, forward and back, left and right, and the waist should be relaxed. When you come to center, some people will transition from this side like that. And when they transition to the other side, they'll just go with the hands like this. That's not um, necessarily incorrect. But for myself, I always like to come to the center in movements and then come back out. Again, when we go into the application, you'll see that being in the center here for warding off is uh, important. So if you're just doing the form, it may not be so apparent why you need to come to the center. And if you're just doing the form, this looks fine. But as you get into an, uh, the knowledge of uh, the application, I feel it's more important to come in to the center here and then out again. And a uh, second very important thing is that the toes are straight forward. A lot of people tend to do it like this with the foot turned out. And as we get into the function, I'll show you why that's a very weak stance. The strongest stance is shoulder width, so you have stability left and right, back and forth this way, and you have strength going this way. Again, the brush knee twist step is Lu in Peng Lu Jian, and it's receiving position and deflecting position, so you need to have stability in all four directions, forward and back, left and right. So the hands are in line with the shoulder in uh, Dalu. In actual application, it might be uh, closer to the center. But in the Dalu, it's like over to the right shoulder. And then when you transition to the other side, when it comes, so you have, your feet are going to be on a slight diagonal because of being shoulder width. When you come back in through the center, instead of going straight back, I'm going to come in and then back out again to the shoulder width stance. Um, before I would teach uh, students, I'd have a couple backwards walking exercises uh, for repulse monkey and brush knee twist step. And in walking backwards, uh, one of the main considerations is to imagine that there's a cliff in back of you. That way, when you step back, you can feel and touch the ground before you roll into your stance. Come back. This is after the finish of the move. In the beginning, transition of the next move. Roll back to gain stability in your supporting leg. Come in through the center. Touch. Then roll back. Come in. Center. Touch and roll back. Again, that's how you should practice the stance. Sideways view would be from the right side, roll back, come in through the center, touch, roll back, come back, center, touch, roll back. So as you're doing the brush and step, 
split wall looks like this. Come back through the center, touch, roll back. Transition through the center, touch, roll back. Remember to have this position in there, strong. And that position again, strong. And that. So I recommend that if you practice, you actually stop in the stances in the beginning. So that fixes in your mind the correct position of the ending position. If you do it too smooth, where you're kind of looking very, very smooth, you might actually forget the purpose of that receiving position. Okay. So let's talk about the function of the move, what it is. In Sifu's practice, he taught one-handed pushing. And Sifu would encourage that uh, right from the beginning. He would have even students that had just learning part way through the set start pushing hands. When I first started studying with Sifu, I was going to art school and I would go to the studio late in the evenings, every evening to practice. And the studio was a very small studio. So there wasn't a lot of room to do a full set. You imagine there's 10, 15 people in the studio. So people could practice a single move over and over. Or Sifu would like to um, actually tell you to pair up with another person and have you push. And there was this guy, Chris, and he was kind of pugnacious and I was kind of pugnacious. And so Sifu would like to pair us up and just have us go at it. So um, we learned a lot just in the pushing hands because in the pushing hands you discover a lot of the function of the uh, moves that you're learning in the Dalu. So since in the pushing hands, the single hand pushing, the basic stance is to the opponent. Unfortunately, I don't have an opponent here, but I have to do it by myself to show you. And you're receiving and then you're pushing. You're receiving and then you're pushing. This hand is kept awake and aware to come into play. So you're receiving and then you're pushing. You're receiving and you're pushing. Receiving and push. So if you notice in the stance, the stance is very much like brush knee twist step. It's shoulder width apart. Not like this because then the person who pushed me on the shoulder I'm going to fall over. So you want to have a strong even stance and you notice that as I'm receiving the toe comes off the ground and there's a reason for that so that when you press in kind of you're pressing in you can lean into the push and again the reason for having those toes straight is because when your leg is turned out like this with the toe pointing out this way you have very weak stability. You want to have the strong stability going forward. And in a, especially in brush knee twist step, when you're actually twisting in this direction here, you want to have that knee in rather than out like that. You could, if you try that, it's like very difficult to sink in. So in receiving the push from the opponent, um, the way to receive a strong push is to sink down. So you're rooting into this back leg here like this. So in brush knee twist step, <clears throat> when the hand comes back, this hand comes up to the shoulder of the opponent as he's pressing in. And it looks like this when you're actually receiving it and pushing hands. In Toy Show, pushing hands, a lot of people use the hands in this space to ward off. I think that that's not incorrect, but um, I think that you should allow the opponent to push you 
that you can learn to receive energy with your body movement rather than warding off out here. Warding off out here is kind of elementary in that anybody can ward off somebody with their hands out here. But to learn how to receive energy with your body and to twist. Also, the idea of Lou is to set the opponent up to use the opponent's uh, energy. Um, in pushing hands, the pung, the push, is actually based on the principle of single whip. And in the pung, the opponent should wait till the hand touches the chest and then sink and press and explode. It's not a forward press like this, but it's like this, like just like in single whip. Like that. Sinking down and expanding out. When the opponent comes in, if you ward off out here, the opponent is never going to try to push because it's only an elementary person that would try to push from way back here. A good opponent would feel his way in and then push at the very end. So by allowing the opponent to come into your chest here and then let him push so that you can sink and deflect, you learn much more than if you just ward off the opponent way out here. Here, you're not learning a thing, you're just learning how to move your arms. Here, you're learning how to sink with that push and to deflect. The second thing is that when you set up your position for the opponent to push in his pung, if you create a resistance with a strong stance, you're forcing the opponent to push harder. And when he's, it should be like the principle of the door, holding the door and then opening the door and the opponent will fall through. And so that's exactly how brush knee twist step and receiving in lieu should be. Strong, he pushes, and then you receive and deflect with the pull. In the Dalu, you're not lifting your toe off the ground. It's just in its opening, a receiving position. So it's not really the application in the form per se. But when you do uh, single hand pushing and the opponent pushes into you and then you do the loo, you understand what a brush knee twist step is totally about. When the opponent comes in and pushes and you and you he's pushing hard and then you break with a turn of your body, then this hand comes up to the opponent's shoulder. Again, you can change into a push. Uh, Receive, loo, and then push off and the opponent goes flying that way. So my telling you this application or the use of brush new twist step is to help you understand what this position here is about. Of course, then as you transition to the other side, you're practicing that receiving position on this side too. So you're practicing on both sides. So you're doing left-handed tway show, pushing hands. Then it would be the same position on this side as the opponent pushes in and the same sinking process. Um, when I'm teaching my students pushing hands, I will actually have them just go ahead and put their hand on the chest and push and then I'll sink to receive and to make them push harder and harder and harder. So just by having this position here, you can receive a lot of energy. Also, in Toy Show, the way that I best describe your body is that the axis is through the top of your head to the bottom of your spine. 
and your body, the torso, acts like a plate on a rod so that it pivots so smoothly left and right that this opponent cannot find your center. So in pushing hands, the center and the ability to go left and right. So when the opponent puts his hand on your chest, if it's a little bit to this side, it goes this way. If it's on this side, it goes this way. So in Toy Show, it can go on this side. So it would end up with uh, like brush me through step on the same side. In viewing a lot of videos, I actually do see a lot of people for some reason that they're, uh, when they're doing their push me to a step, they're actually on this side rather than this side, but it should always be opposite side and opposite hand forward. That's why it's called twist step. So I help uh, this morning helps you understand the function of brush knee to a step and to clarify um, how you should look at the moves as you're performing the Dalu. Again, the Dalu is only a starting point for your understanding of Tai Chi, it's not the end all. And as you do your Dalu, the fixed form, um, there's many ways that you can experiment with uh, the movements and because you're starting in point A and you're starting in point B, but understanding the function of the movement helps you to establish for yourself how you want to establish your practice of the Dalu. Again, for me, I like to be in the diagonal stance with the hands in the position. I like to come through the center so I can ward off whenever I have to change and then like to change to the other side. So that's how understanding the function helped me in performing my Dalu. So play around with it and enjoy. Thank you. In transition, we're coming to the center and then to the left side. Again, hands in line with the shoulder. Coming back, hands on the right side, line with the right. Left. Hmm. Parry and punch. <laughs> 